too. He was a functioning alcoholic, and he took pills. I mean, for all you women out there that are listening, I understand the pain you're going through. It's so hard. It's so terribly painful and hard to try to make your family work when your husband's sick. So um, don't let yourself get bogged down into that situation. You have to reach out. You have to get uh, someone who is away from the story to help be a lifeline is what I say. Mm, and, uh, that's good. God is always our lifeline. And we, yes. always, you know, but God, is, God wants us to reach out. He, he's not going to physically force us. You have to um, keep yourself in check enough that you try to get help for you because I lost myself in this. You know, it's so easy for, for women to do when we love our children and we love our husband. It's hard for us to take care of ourselves, And so I just always say, please remember to take care of you because if you're not okay, you can't take care of anybody else. That is the truth. I love it. Like, as you were saying that you were saying God being our lifeline, it reminds me of the scripture where it talks about Jesus is our anchor. Like, he will definitely yes. anchor you, but he also operates through people, and he gave people gifts and talents, like, for the edifying and equipping of the saints. So yes. it's one of those things where that connectivity is so important because we're a body, like we're supposed to function together. And we all know if one area is weak, you know, the body will compensate for that. But you have to, like you said, reach out um, to receive that compensation and to get that support. So I'm just, I'm glad you're lifting the veil and letting people know that it's okay, like to feel, A, to feel the way they feel. Like this is hard. I'm struggling. I'm lost in this even though I still love my family, but two, like, there's a way out of this. So I would, as your as your wrap-up, what would you say is, like, the hope side of it all? How do you feel now? How has it been? Because it's still, it's still probably still tender, I would think. So how are you uh, feeling now? What is recovery looking like for you now, and how can people connect with you in the future? That's awesome. Thank you so much for asking that question as well, because I do have days, I have a lot of days where I'm down, because, you know, I've lost everything. I've lost time materialistically, which is just that's nothing compared to losing your family and your husband. And I've lost everything mm-hmm. in this. And um, mm-hmm. I, my, my children, um, you know, they don't understand what happened. I, I say it took me 29 years in my marriage to try to finally figure out, even after Grant's death, what really happened. And so I, I have to be patient with my three grown children to know that they still are walking, um, under, trying to understand too. So for people that are listening, women, um, you know, if you've lost a lot, your family, your husband, don't give up hope because I know that you have to anchor yourself to to God and and he will never let you sink. So I I just try to keep those things in balance, knowing that I've lost a lot, but yet I still have a lot of hope. And I'm praying that every day my message, um, I say it's honoring Grant. Because um, mm-hmm. there is a huge message with this. The CTE issue is something that's really relevant to every day. We see it in the news nearly every single day. Um, I just want to quickly read the symptoms of CTE because some women whose husbands played maybe in high school or college, maybe they don't have any idea of what's happening to the man they love. These are some symptoms that I just looked up after I found out that Grant had stage 3 CTE, um, and it was docu- it is documented by the Boston University. Um, I was just looking on the internet for anything I could find and I saw on the Mayo Clinic their web their website has a lot of information and I, I love the fact that it just laid out the symptoms. Irritability, impulsiveness, aggression, depression, short term memory loss, heightened suicidality. Um, And it says that usually after eight to ten years um, is when you can experience some mild traumatic issues from brain injury. Um, Dementia, you know, Grant was forgetting a lot of things. He was unorganized. At one point, he even had um, a speech stuttering problem that I just thought was because he was drunk most of the time. But yet, I find that now that's a CTE symptom as well. Um, a lot like Parkinson's disease, his hands shook a lot, um, trembles. These are just things that I had no idea about while he was living. And now we know that since he's, he, even since he's died, which is five years, we now know that um, the brain damage can manifest itself in ALS, Parkinson's disease, dementia. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's interesting how fast science is moving on this. So I just say that, you know, it, it was hard for me to ever make a connection that Grant's 
personality change had anything to do with the brain. So I just mm-hmm. think I'm looking that if somebody's going to have an aha moment while I'm speaking anytime. Yes. Yeah. I always like to say the symptoms and say, you know, at least look at it, Google it. There's so much information. Even as mothers for children that you're thinking about putting your child in a high-impact head-banging sport, look at the dangers before you do that because there's so many options and so many other things that we can do to keep our children safe. Wow. Thank you. I really appreciate, Cindy, that you took that time to give us that information because I think some of the things you listed, we will see those things in people all the time and not even think twice or just think like, oh, they're just being extra today or, you know, right. just, you know, or they're just tired or, you know, or just they're in a lot of pain. But it can be some way more serious side effects. And really, you might see that in some high school and college age. Cause some kids have been playing since they were eight years old, you know, so they've Absolutely. already got 10 years in before they even get to college. Exactly. Um, and see, Grant played football from eight to to 32 and so you know I mean no wonder yeah. I say it was like a slow fade in our marriage I think I was seeing the brain damage just slowly you know manifesting in life and so it does answer a lot of questions for people if they're having any of these issues it's at least something you might want to look at and, absolutely um, definitely children I mean people think this is an NFL concussion disease and that's what the industry wants you to believe, that this is just, uh, you know, happening to NFL players. But I have connected with many people who their children are dead, and they have been documented as having CTE as well. So please, parents, I just say, Mom, it's, it's our responsibility. God gave us this responsibility to make sure that our children are safe. So please look at that. Wow, wow. Cindy, I'm so thankful that you have came on today to share with us this information. I think just the fact, like you said, you took it just from out of just the NFL, so that's kind of like far fetched that's that 1%, right? Like, no, we've got little kids every day who are playing, so I just think that that's right. so important. From a wife's standpoint, from a mother's standpoint, because they're definitely, you know, women are readers. Men are too. Don't get mad at me. Oh. No, men are too. <laughs> However, <laughs> However, us women yes. like to read a, a good story, and I, I definitely want to highly recommend just me reading the story. I'm like, it's just so emotional to really connect to it, whether you know someone in football or not, just from a wife and mother standpoint. Um, so I definitely, I highly recommend it. Is there any other way that people can can reach out to you or yes, connect to you? yes, and please, I, I, I say I'm leading the parade. You know, I really for mothers, and I'm a teacher, and I was also a mother. So even though my husband died and he has CTE, I'm, I'm talking about CTE, but I'm also talking every day about the dangers for your children. I have a Facebook page, and it's Cindy Feasel. It's Cindy Feasel. You can find it so easy, and I welcome anybody to just take a look. Um, I put out daily information, and I usually have something about youth football every single day on that page. So I just say it's an awareness page. It's an education page. So I, I beg anybody to, you know, I say every day, begging parents to listen. So please um, take a look at that, and let's be friends. I carry on conversations with anybody that talks to me, and I, I welcome it. So please, I would love for you to do that. And also on Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes and Left Noble, take a look at that today. If not, you can easily get it. Come to your door at Amazon. And I just always say I thank anybody that would take the time to read the story because it is um, my life mission. Along with um, teaching children, I, I teach them art on a daily basis in school. Wow, this is so awesome. I'm like, as tragic as it was and is, I'm so excited because I love to see someone championing a cause. And this is phenomenal so please please we have links provided on our website that you can go ahead and purchase this book it's definitely a great purchase it'll make a great gift um for other people especially for moms that you may know or wives who just need to hear this story um so we just want to thank our listeners for listening today cindy i want to thank you so much for sharing your heart and your story and maybe even touching on some things that you don't usually touch on in interviews so i really do appreciate that I want to thank our listeners for connecting with us here at Connecting Christians. And make sure you know our email address and everything you get to us is ConnectionHQ.com for a better way to buy books. Today's host was Christiana Green from TheBeautyMentor.org. Be sure to connect with our authors and our hosts under our Connect tab at ConnectionsHQ.com.